I think we finished the verse 5, isn't it? Finished verse 5, yes. So then, uh, I read the last part of the verse again, and then we start with verse 6. Perfect. So then yesterday we stopped with the, oh my God. I will open the door, Suniti will listen. So we finished yesterday with Shiradika's foot dust is more valuable than millions of Chintamani gems. And my mind rallies its remembrance. Thus, she Prabodhananda, who finds pleasure in this intimate worship, reveals his aspirations. Now we read verse 6 of Shishi Rata Rasudhanidi. Glory to some Nikunja Devi. This is a Bauer goddess, goddess of the Nikunja, who revives the son of Maharaj Nanda Mohan who has fainted out of affliction caused by millions of Cupid's darts. With the nectar waves of her bodily contact, which is the essence of divine blissful rasa. Glory to some Nikunja Devi, who revives the son of Maharaj Nanda, who has fainted out of affliction caused by millions of Cupid's darts, with the nectar waves of her bodily contact, which is the essence of divine blissful rasa. So because of his bodily contact to Mahabhav, he got fainted. So intense. The goddess who rewrites Sri Krishna, as long as a devotee is in the stage of practice, he feels that his usual bodily consciousness is mixed with an awareness of his eternal spiritual body. But when he reaches the stage of Rati or Bhav, he becomes liberated. Sri Vishwana Chakravati Pada writes in Madhurya Kadamini, in the stage of Bhav, the feeling of I-ness has almost entered the Siddha Deya, the spiritual body, and has almost given up the material body. The feelings of minus have then become like bees that start to drink the honey of God's lotus feet.
In the stage of Prema, there is no end to the stream of Leelas that one spiritually witnesses and one is intensely absorbed in one's Varupa Vesh, what is the identification with one's spiritual body. And we can understand a, a continuum in the devotee's praxis, practice. Rati or Bhav, he becomes liberated, liberated from the bodily consciousness, no? And from bodily identifications with this body and with all things about this body, what belongs to the body. If we are no more identified with our body, so also the identification with uh, family, country, and so on is automatically is leaving. That not means that uh, we leave everything uh, artificially behind us to be without material sorrows or like this. But we come on a soul level, so we make no more difference between all living beings. So we feel this oneness with everything around us. So that is a, a higher level of seeing this world and everything what belongs to this world. This is a liberation. We can also say that it's a And the moment we are blinded by Mahamaya, so because of her, we think we are this body and we can control everything around us. But in the stage of liberation, we cannot see like this. We are first on a soul level. And the next step is the identification in the spiritual level with the spiritual body. But in the beginning, it is maybe mixed. But then, <clears throat> in the stage of Rati, that means a, a complete attachment to the spiritual or bath is a feeling in the spiritual path, then we finish this. <clears throat> and in our case, it is uh, a sty bath, and this is, the goal is also when we are in the stage of Bhavulas Rati as a manjari. And this is explained by our Vishwana Chakravati part. In the stage of bath, the feeling of Ines has almost entered the Siddhadeya. So, understand, I am, I'm not the material body, I'm the spiritual body. I'm an eternal soul and with a, with a uh, spiritual body. This is I, this is me. I accept myself as this. And I give up the idea of I am 
this material body. The difference is actually we will 100% give up the identification with this body at least when we leave this body when we die what we say in this world but actually we cannot die the soul is eternal and what is eternal will never die but we have to accept to give up this body. That will happen uh, someday. We don't know when. But actually, our mind cannot accept this. <clears throat> so we don't think about it so much. <clears throat> we can see every day that people around us leave their bodies. But we cannot accept this for our own. <laughs> there are always others who are leaving body, but to me it's not, not possible. And actually it's true. On the soul level, we never die. And then if we, in that moment, we enter a spiritual body by Gurudev's and Radhika's blessings. Even in this, in this material body, we get liberated because our eternal soul entered an eternal body. So that will not change anymore. And that means a sty bath. This is forever. Is if, if we accept ourselves as a maid servant, Swamini will accept us and will never leave us. So that means the stage of liberation from, uh, from this circle of dead and live life. Then it stopped. Rata's maid servants uh, in the stage of Prema, there is no end to the stream of Leelas that one spiritually witnesses and one is intensely absorbed in one Swarupa Vesh. This is uh, the identification with one spiritual body. Rata's maid servants are in the category of Mahabhav. Therefore, their absorption is the most intense. Because Mahabhav is including all Bhav, right? And this is the highest stage. And this Mahabhav is or came in this material world in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That was not before. Rata came in the mood of Radhika and in the mood of Manjari. And we can take from this moment on uh, part of of this uh, category of bath of Mahabhav. No one incarnation before could uh, give this category. There was different kind of bath, maybe possible, but not Mahabhav. So including all. 
This is a unique thing happened 500 years ago and still happen now. And we can prove it in the form of our uh, spiritual teacher, spiritual master of our Gurudev. Because he is uh, still in this line of those who got Mahabhav. And in the Vilap Kushmanjali, we, we, uh, there is uh, described that Radhika is Mahabhav and the maidservants have Mahabhav because they, uh, what, they are so close to her and uh, Mahabhav is entering their hearts so they can feel what Radhika can, uh, what Radhika is feeling. And because of this oneness, they know exactly what is needed in the service, in the kunja. Glory to Samni Kunja Devi. It's a, a Bawa goddess. The devotees must be aware of their expertise, expertise in service. And in our case, it's that of the manjaris, maid servants. Otherwise, they cannot follow in their footsteps, in their meditations. So this is the spiritual identification we have to fix. What is Gurudev is uh, uh, guiding us. He fix our identification. He actually give the identification in the spiritual form. And this is because he got it by his guru and he can give it to his disciple. He is empowered in the parampara line. Otherwise they cannot follow in their footsteps, in their meditations and Without following in the footsteps of the residents of Braj, as Rupa Goswami teaches, one cannot attain perfection in the Braja Rasa. So this is uh, it's clear. Yeah. There is a, uh, it's a beauty of, of uh, Parampara. Parampara means following in the footsteps. Or how Gurudev explained, he is, he is actually the navigator. And uh, we need to follow him because he know the way. We don't know the way. And uh, so we become like, like he is a shadow of Radhika, we have to become his shadow. So, so nice, huh? And as long, as longer we are reading this, as, as more clear it comes to us, isn't it? Yeah, Gora, can you dive deeper into the expertise and service? Being aware yeah, that we serve it. Yes. The expertise in the service. So that means that we actually know everything about the service. Like we got from... Uh, Tulsi Manjari in the Vilap Kush Manjari. He explained all details in the service, like uh, making some uh, good luck, how we decorate our Swamini. So this is our meditation. When we, in the meditation, we think about our own service what we can do and uh, 
to become expert, we also need a, a teacher, right? Like uh, in the material world, if you like to learn about uh, how to fix some electrician things, you need one who teach you how to do it. And then you have exactly to follow his steps. If you not do, then uh, maybe some problem will come. And then when you plug in something, it will not work, maybe. Because you, you did your own way. You don't believe in your uh, teacher. So you think, oh, no, I, I, I think I know everything. Uh, he can tell me a lot of things, but I do like, I think it's better. So then it will not work. No electricity will come. And so in the same way, we have to follow our spiritual master because he knows exactly how to fix this and how to become expert in the service. And then when we follow, we exactly know what to do then. We are proper prepared for this Radhika Seva. Mm. And actually the most need, the most thing we need is after all the greed to do this. And then really follow that instructions. And then it will, uh, the main instruction is, is to enter in the feelings towards our Swamini. If we enter the feeling, so the expertise will come more and more because we get this in the heart, in our hearts. In the beginning, we are like uh, like this kinker is very small, and we don't know so much. But step by step, if we, if we are steady and following our Guru Manjari, then we, after all, we will learn more and more. We know exactly how to do things, and then we become expert. And our feelings become more intense towards our Ishta Devi. In the beginning, we don't know so much, but then we know the beauty of her eyes and how to decorate these beautiful eyes. Then we see these eyes and with our minds. We never saw these eyes and with material eyes we cannot see but in the if we fell in love with swamini we can see her beautiful eyes the eyes of mahabha this is not a material experience this is a spiritual thing full of emotions and we know the desire of her eyes, what they are looking for, and where all this enthusiasm in these eyes coming from. These are the eyes of Mahabhav. There is no higher feeling we can see in anyone other's eyes. We see her nose, forehead, the hairs, and we know exactly how to decorate every part of her body to make it even more attractive for Mohan, because she is always meditating how to make Mohan happy, and how to serve him. And we are the servants of her. 
And in this case, of course, we make also more unhappy. But our meditation is on, always on Swamini. And so we become step by step uh, experts in the service to her, towards her. Mm. Now we are more or less experts in material uh, things. <laughs> but then we change. This is the beauty of a spiritual way to enter in this in this mood of the manjari. It's the most beautiful mood. So we become servant of the love personified. And how it is described. Their absorption is the most intense. Right? Yeah, so beautiful. Thank you. Others are also in different kinds of bar because this is meaning of uh, of Vrindavan. They all in in a kind of a bar, but Swamini is Mahaba, including all others. And we serve Mahabhav, so we also become Mahabhav. Shripad is absorbed in remembering Sri Radharani's foot dust. And now he becomes aware of another sweet Leela. So we can see if, if we are absorbed in Radhika's foot dust, we also will be become aware of Leela. We, yeah, we go always deep and deeper, and so this vision will come. This is what we are praying for. It is the full moon night in the spring, Vasanti Purnima. And when Sri Krishna sees the full moon rising in the sky, he remembers Sri Radha's face. So also Krishna remembers. He is absorbed in Radharani, like we are absorbed in her. In great secrecy, he comes to Vrindavan and starts playing his enchanting flute there to attract the hearts and minds of the gopis. So, in this case, Radhika is also a gopi. She listened to that. Mm -hmm. But maid servants, are not in that category. Shirata and the gopis meet Vamsidara on the broad bank of the Yamuna and commence the Rasa dance with him. Sri Hari embraces some of them, kisses some of them, and enjoys with some of them. Iranika then becomes proud and jealous and leaves the Rasa dance. Not seeing her, Hari becomes very upset and he leaves all the other gopis to search for her only. Sri Ramananda Roy told Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
how he could not find Rata anywhere. All through he wandered here and there looking for her. Thus he began to lament, being pierced by Cupid's arrows. Even a billion gopis could not extinguish his lusty desires. So there is always some desires left when he is uh, with the other gopis. Mm. Oh, the fulfillment of his desire is only possible by Shiradika. So he is in trouble now. Pierced by the darts of millions of cupids and wailing Harate, Harate. He fainted. There is no material cupid in Vrindavan, for there is nothing material in that abode. What's over? Therefore, then it is said that Hari was pierced by millions of Cupid's darts. It is meant here that the eternally self-satisfied, transcendental Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, is always eager to accept the loving service of his devotees. Shri Krishna manifests his transcendental desires according to the amount of loving devotion his devotees have for him. His devotees have for him. That means the gopis. Because the Manjaris are the devotees of Radhika. All through the sweet and beautiful gopis of Braj, all have an abundance of Mahabhav for Krishna. Sri Radharani is the essence of Mahabhav personified. So the other gopis can never satisfy him like she can. You see, this is the point. She is Mahabhav. The others have particular. They are not complete. They have parts. Because actually they are parts and parcels of Radharani's mercy. But she is the only one. She is the only one who is the essence of Mahabhav personified. So beautiful, huh? How great our Swamini is. It's always so to meditate on her greatness. It's also meditate on the foot dust of her lotus feet. Because she is ready to share with us and to let us enter in these uh, feelings. She will accept us as her maid servants. But this is only possible when we are ready to give up all other ideas of who we are. There is no not possible to be a little bit made servant. <laughs> Shiradika proudly left the Rasa dance, but when she saw the beauty of the spring forest, she remembered Shyamsunda. Sripad, 
in his kinkery form, stays with her and serves her. So you see, gopis are waiting somewhere in that place, the rasa dance. was um, was happened. But the Manjaris, they was following Swamini. They are not there to wait that Krishna will come back. No, no, the, they are following like her shadows, our Swamini. Seeing how eager her Ishwari is, to meet her lover, the maidservant consoles her and goes out to find him. Mm. She suddenly finds Shamsunna in the Dira Samira garden, but he is in a state of swoon. The maidservant decides not to tell Swamini anything but simply to encourage her to meet Krishna, saying, Oh, Rati, I came there and I saw that Vanamali is greatly suffering out of separation from you. The southern breezes that carry the fragrance of rare flowers only increase his agony. When he is touched by the corona of moon rays, he almost dies. He laments when he is pierced by Cupid's cruel arrows. And when he hears the humming of the bees, he blocks his ears. Tonight he suffers even more from separation. He cannot tolerate to be without you for a single moment anymore. He gives up his abode of joy and rolls in the thorny bushes for your sake singing your names in great lamentation. In this way, the maidservant encouraged Swamini in order to extinguish the fire of Shamsundara's separation. So we can see exactly the maidservant know they are so much expert how to deal with him and with her. Always, always aware her service, but actually how to bring them together. They, they are so expert. And the divine couple needs this expertise, this kind of expertise in that, in that situation. When Swamini hears about Ananata's pitiful condition, she comes to the Dira Samira garden with her maidservant and sees her hero lying there in a swoon. Swamini is very upset when she sees her beloved in such a state. So she tries to revive him by showering him with waves of the essence of the transcendental blissful rasa of her bodily company. So we can understand what is meaning of her bodily company. She is so much loving him. And when he, when she see him 
that makes even, that makes waves of feelings overwhelming her. And so she gives him her bodily company. She kisses him and embraces him with her vine-like arms, reviving him with her nectarian flavors, stands and touches just as a heroic warrior who has fainted from the onslaughts of his enemy's arrows is revived revived by a shower of cold water and some medicinal herb. So beautiful. When we uh, in our inner eyes can see this scene when Swamini see his Mohan unconscious. She kisses him and embraces him with her vine-like arms, reviving him with her nectarian flavors, scents and touches. <laughs> then the divine couple enters a private arbor which was furnished by the maid servants beforehand. Wow. We see it's all preparated by by our seva, no? by our um, what to say expertise. Mm. Then the divine couple enters a private arbor which was furnished by the maid servants beforehand. With a charming bed of flowers, with a flower pillow, a canopy made of fragrant flowers and lamps that shine like the buds of a golden champaka flower. Here, Sri Krishna will worship his Nikunja Devi. Goddess of Kunja. The word, the word, the word Jayati in the text is in the present tense, indicating that these Leelas continue eternally in Braj. So we can see that this is always happened. It not it was, but it is. Krishna is named Madana Mohana because he enchants Cupid. Indeed, he is the useful Cupid himself. Still, when he is pierced by Cupid's millions of arrows, when he is separated from Rata, he faints. At that time, Sri Radhika sprinkles Nanda's son a hundred times with the nectarian essence of divine ecstatic rasa of her bodily company, serving her hero favorably by reviving him once more. Here we really enter in our Swamini's feelings, isn't it? How deep is her love? They belong together. 
And when they are separated, they are, they actually, they cannot live without each other. Radhe, Radhe. Vandana, um, Radhe, good morning. Um, so it's very, I guess, very deep and maybe we can more go into um, the part. Um, wait. He is the useful Cupid himself. Still, when he is pierced by Cupid's millions of arrows, when he is separated from Radha, he faints. So, in this Leela, what's happening, they are actually together, right? It was described they are going together in the Nikunja. And then suddenly... So he is separated, he faints. I don't know if somebody could explain what's going on there. <laughs> no, it was before they was uh, separate because they was in the Rasa Lila and Radhika leave this uh, Rasa Lila. Yes. And then because of separation with her, he faints. Okay. And then by the arrangement of the maid servant, uh, Radhika revives him with her bodily fragrance and kisses and embracing. And so then when that happened, that he was revived, then they entered the Kunja that was prepared by the uh, expertise of the maid servants. Oh, this okay. is. No, I, I got it. Resistance. Thank you. Oh, this is really a, such a beautiful picture in this morning to see how expertly the manjaris are preparing. Then the divine couple enters a private arbor which was furnished by the maid servants beforehand. beforehand with a charming bed of flowers, with a flower pillow, a canopy made of fragrant flowers, and lamps that shine like the buds of champaka flowers, golden champaka flowers. Here, Sri Krishna will worship his Nikunja Devi. Now he is revived and now he can worship her. And this is uh, not meaning of uh, what we see in the past that here is described that is happening continuously in Raja. And we know before Radhika was actually reviving him, she gave the seva to Moha. And now in the Kunja, he will serve her, worship. So then now he becomes a what is it in English? Dina. Her, her devotee. Her servant. All glories to the shining goddess of the Arbors, the incomparable useful heroine. Sri Prabhupada says, This moon of Vishabhanu's dynasty is a bat full of rasa.
the beautiful example I I feel this verse to see when Swamini is leaving the Rasa dance. The gopis they are waiting there, but the manjari is following like shadows their Swamini. Mm. They are not taking part of the Rasa dance. They staying outside and watching what they can do, what is now next need for a Swamini. And now we can see that they following Swamini, they make the arrangement, they, they find the place Mohan is lying in agony and in, in separation of Swamini. And they bring them together by beautiful words they use towards Swamini about the situation of her Mohan. And then when they come together, they know exactly the need in the situation. They know now they need the kunja. And that has to be prepared. And so immediately they can, after the meeting and reviving Mohan, they can enter this kunja and there Mohan can worship a Swamini. His It's such a beautiful meditation, isn't it? Yeah, it's so beautiful. And we are like Prabhupada We are in that situation. We can maybe uh, serve him also. We can meditate on this what he did and how he expertly he prepared the bed of flowers, a pillow made of rose leaf. But also this poetry, how she describes to Swamini the situation of Mohan. Mm -hmm. It's most beautiful. We cannot really understand this words in the origin and from the Gita Govinda. But if one is expert and will read it in the origin, that will be most beautiful sound. Vahati Malaya. Samire Madanam Upanidaya. So beautiful words, sweet. In English it's Orate. I came here, I came there. This is more, it's not so in this, this language is not this sweet like it's in the origin. It's so, how they say, Samire Madanam Upanidaya. Saki, hey, that's so beautiful. So I think now we end this beautiful verse, and I will again read. Glory to Samni Kunja Devi, a bower goddess who revives the son of Maharaj Nanda. 
who was who has fainted out of affliction caused by millions of cupid's darts mm -hmm. with the nectar waves of her bodily contact which is the essence of divine blissful rasa Sometimes Radhika also uses the maid servants to revive Mohan, right? For this, she trained the maid servant. We could read in the Villa Kushmanjali how to sing beautiful love songs about her glory. So the maid servant can sing this. She cannot sing herself. <laughs> about her own glories but the maid servant can sing about her glories as swamini's glories and so by listening this song of the maid servant he also will become uh, conscious but here in this verse we can see she revives him with the nectar waves of her own bodily contact by kissing and embracing him. So, and with this picture, I think we can finish this verse when we see how Swamini is reviving Mohan by kissing and embracing him. It's so beautiful. And we feel in our hearts that our service was successful because we brought them again together. And this is our rasa. This is the fulfillment of the seva rasa. We prepared the skunja perfectly for their Beautiful Leela, what then happened. And also by our poetic uh, words, we could bring them again together. Jai Sirate. Someone like to add something? Maybe I just like to add that dear Samir is very beautiful place and uh, it's very quiet and uh, quite close to the Yamuna. So some wind can easily come there also. And the Radharani of this place is very beautiful. She has a, a, a grayish, uh, dusky complexion. And it's really full. I showed the photo of Anka and he said, wow, full ecstasy. <laughs> so, and there is even some greenery is there. And um, yeah, I, I saw this place the first time and I think it's even more beautiful now that we read the, the Leela that's happening there to, to mm -hmm. visit if you have the chance next time or now. La -de -la -de. <laughs> Thank you, Vandana. Jai Sri Radhe. Satri, what about you? Yeah, it's so beautiful, Gora. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Over new Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I just, I think, um, 
expert service like is so it's like they they deliver um the services so nicely but they the mandris also anticipate um what swamini will need because she has this this close connection with her and that kept coming to me is like she knew that somebody would want to go and see her her mohan you know in this state and and how to how to sing to her how to um give her these beautiful words that would bring her to him and then also once they came together and swamini revived him how they had already prepared the kunja it just is so nice when you have this closeness and you know how to serve um because you're sharing i guess the feelings of what of what swamini needs So this is what was coming to me in this verse. And in the beginning of the explanations also one part Radha's maid servants are in the category of mahabha therefore their absorption is the most intense and this is actually what moha not can understand he cannot understand radhika's feelings towards him and he cannot understand the manjari's feelings towards radhika yesterday we read about the footlock how he tried to put the footlock on uh, swamini's uh nails and uh we could see that he is not able to do it because he is so overwhelmed by the feelings that he is then he by a hint of of swamini he has to move and uh, then the pinkery came and make perfectly this service and this he is wondering how is this possible because when he is so close to swamini he starts to shivering and but the manjaris are also in in the, uh, in a kind of ecstasy but the service mood is always dominate dominate dominating so that they can never start with shivering because that will disturb their service and for them the service is the highest and they are relishing the seva rasa and this mohan cannot and so he desired so much to enter in the feelings of the manjari and that happened in chaitanya mahaprabhu he is krishna and he is in the feelings of our swamini and also feeling of a maid servant so that he can relish this this oneness a maid servant can relish in the sevaras in the service so our position is is as even a position mohan not understand so because of this it is described therefore their absorption is the most intense
And here the devotees must be aware of their expertise in service. This is the point. It's not possible that our hand will shiver by decoration of our Swamini. We are always aware of our expertise, that means of our Seva. This is the Stai Bhav. We see our Seva. And from that, our Rasa is coming. Our Rasa. And so, going into this as a very fallen soul who is not at this level to be in in the Leela serving, Bora, do you have any um, words you can share on how to be like an expert in even the service of chanting or in the sevas that we do here in Vrindavan um, and how we can how we can slowly slowly get to this you know to this stage one thing is the most for me is the most important thing is to be close to gurudev so that his uh, his bath can enter our heart because he is close to Swamini, he is close to his Guru. And this is the way how it's described in the footsteps. If you follow one's footstep, you cannot be far. He has to be very close. Like we can see sometimes on the beach when uh, one is, is uh, running or walking on, on the sand of the beach. Then we can see these footsteps, but there is some waves coming. Then after 10 meters or 15 meters, there are no more footsteps. They washed away, right? Yeah. But if we close to them behind him, we can also use his footsteps because we can see this. So in the same way, we have to be very close to our Gurudev to see what is meaning of his footsteps. How deep is his absorption? But actually, as a, as a thing, we cannot describe with words what happened when we are close to him and serving his, uh, uh, yes, his lotus feet. Then it happened in the heart, something is coming. It's like a blessing. And then is the start to continuing. And we listen to him. And when he speaks about his uh, uh, ashram, there is always Radha Mohan. This is absolutely his focus. He is completely identified as the servant of Radha Mohan. And this is very beautiful. If we do that, And in this case here, when I read this, I think about myself to be next to Prabhupada Nandaji. When he is relishing this beautiful Leela, I try to be next to him as a Manjari. This is my meditation. So I, I, I train, and I'm in the training 
for my uh, Swarupa wish. And as more I do this, as more I tense, this Swarupa wish is coming to me. And I can really feel what is going on between him and Radhika and Radhika and Mohan. So I can enter in their feelings by his instructions and follow him here very closely. Mm. Not in my body, not in my material body consciousness. I'm really try to be in a, in a in that meditation of a maid servant, what is given by a Guru Dev. This is his uh, his gift to all of us that we can meditate on our uh, individual uh, maid servant form. So nice, thank you. Yes, and I, in the last uh, um, two months, Three person in my age left the body, what was who was uh, more or less close to me. Uh, even yesterday, I got the information when a friend of mine uh, again left the body. So I feel because of this, even more emergency that that there has to be an intense greed to relish all this in this life, in this short time, we are in this body, because we don't know if there a next life coming, what will happen. Do we meet again? a self-realized guru who is in a in a fixed line without interruption our line is continuously since mahaprabhu this is amazing it's 500 years continuously uh, uh, this mood of the maid servant is uh, uh, <coughs> is giving from one generation to the next, is carried like a treasure and put in the heart of the next generation. So we are so lucky that we now really so close to this uh, maid servanthood and that we have to use And I see also that this kind of, of what is meaning here, what is described of liberate, liberation. Um, in this way, we also take care of generations of our family members. This is described in the Bhagavad Gita also. Krishna described that if one becomes a devotee, he will also liberate the whole family line, not only in the past, but also in the future. So what more service we can do to our mothers and fathers and so on. So I, I cannot see only myself when I try to continue this, this way and intensely 
but I have also a responsibility. And also to my friends I met in this life, to all relatives around me. When we give some prasadam, because we know about these things, they have no idea actually. And this is meaning of a of a awakening the soul that Jeev Jago is, is uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is, is telling this in, in the song, uh, Jeev Jago, wake up, wake up your soul. And if we, by the mercy of Gurudev, are still in that process of awakening, so then we don't have to think about only on ourselves, but all others are sleeping around us. We should also try to wake them up. Mm -hmm. there, there is no need to to, uh, to bring them on the same way because they have maybe in the beginning they have no interest. But by by uh, serving them uh, prasadam and uh, maybe by showing pictures of Radha Mohan and like this, so that they get some connection. So this is uh, what I feel to myself, that there are more than me, there is more than only me. So and I know that when there is a, a, a relative of mine who leave body, I always uh, uh, spend a prempashad in his name because I know the power of this. What this soul, it's, it's uh, only, uh, for me it's only a little thing, uh, I mean, uh, the, to spend a, a prepasha in their name, but for their soul, it's a, a question of, of uh, life and death. When they serve, even indirectly, uh, to bridge parties, this is a, 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 a huge thing. So they get the, a real blessing by Radha Mohan because they see this. And this is not that Radha Mohan are not there, they are there. And they watch everything in front of the temple. Mm -hmm. And when they see this, our small, what is it, picture? Where is described who is who is in uh, uh, whose name is the prasad dist distribution today? There is a name written there. Every day another name is there, right? Yeah. And you can imagine if one's name is once written in Vrindavan. This is amazing. For that we write the names, so that Rana Mohan relish, uh, relish no, realize who is who is that, who is that soul there, who spent this prempashad. This is a this name is like a name what is eternally written in that book. Mm -hmm. There is a big power behind this. We do not relish this in this life now, but it is, it happened. So I like always to see when there every day some new uh, devotee.
devotees are written in this on this picture. Jai Shri Radhe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Radhe Radhe. Thank you. Wake up now. Radhe Thank you so much, Radhe Radhe. Thank you, Kishori. Mommy, you save our life today again. Hmm? Hmm? You save our real life today. <laughs> you are so close to Radha Mohan. And Gurudev is not coming uh, today, huh? Yeah, still he have to do something. And the Sri Dada will go daily in the center. Huh? Yeah, ah. so try to help him. Oh, very good. So nice. Yeah, if we have any news, we will share, of course. And the yes. desire is please keep on Sangha. Yeah. Yes. You are represent of our Guru Dev Gorasunda Prabhu and all. We need everyone. Yes. We all have to be close to him and put him in our heart so that we follow his footsteps in that meaning, how he follow his guru. Yes. And Gurudev always said that he is never in separation to his guru. He's yes. always with him in the heart. He feels him. And so we also try to be close to our Gurudev so that we can feel his presence in our hearts. Yes. And in Brindava now, very cold the time, intense cold. Oh, oh. And uh, someone is sick. And yeah. It's devotees, but we try to keep on distributing prasadam and big cleaning is happening. Yeah. We try to keep on seva. Mm, my God. This is always this time, January, December, January is uh, tapasya in Finland. <laughs> then Not we easy. have our clothes and... Nothing, all, all things are wet, more or less, and many are sick. Oh my God. Yeah, and uh, I pray from bottom of my heart, your area, Heavy this flood happen as much as uh, not so much heavy damage and uh, quickly recover your area. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, this is a, at the moment it's very heavy and together with storm. But also, I heard in, in Japan also things happen there again, and so I was also thinking on you that so many Japanese devotees are there and. I think their mind is also in at home, so that hopefully there is not not too much damage by this earthquake. No? Thank you. And it's good that you are there in Vrindavan and can pray for them. <laughs> no, it's it's all all mercy. I'm nothing really. I see all the Japanese, also you, also devoted. I see your face, and Sadobi, thank you for keeping this fire today, also. Thank you. 